Hey everybody, we're going to look at connecting our devices today. We've already looked at this a few times and I did a little video about this uh, this past week which talked about it, but I want to go a little bit more in depth and show a more advanced setup with it. Uh, I have three different mobile devices currently which have audio apps on them, so I'm going to connect all three of them. Uh, usually if I do this, I'm using two of them connected and then one of them as the Logic Remote. But I wanted to go all out and see just what was possible with it. What you're seeing on the screen is this setup, the test that I did just in the kitchen with just my laptop showing, or I wanted to see what the limits were. I actually discovered there were a number of limitations with this setup. One of them is, is that this little MacBook Pro just doesn't have nearly enough ports without using hubs and other things. And so I connected most of the MIDI stuff via USB 2 with a hub and then as much other things as I could uh, with the newer USB. It ran into a number of issues and it was definitely interesting kind of challenge to figure it all out. But what I want to do is jump in, show you the key elements in the software to make this work, primarily being aggregate devices and the audio MIDI setup. So if you've never used those before, this will be an interesting a test for you. Keep in mind that because I'm screen grabbing or screen capturing, that there's a little additional latency that wouldn't be there without it. So the minute you take that part of the equation out, you're going to have a much tighter response time, even though you're going to have to always be careful because the, the minute you start using aggregate devices and multiple things externally, it does affect that a little bit. So you just want to always be aware of it and testing it and double checking it to make sure you're not adding latency when you don't need to. Okay, so what we're going to do today is connect all three of my devices that I have audio stuff on them into Logic. I want to show you how to create an aggregate device so that we can use them all simultaneously. Even though I could run all three of these instruments on my iPad Pro, this is just to demonstrate how you would do it on individual devices knowing that I could put three of these on, on the one iPad and three or four on my other iPad and probably at least as many on my iPhone. So I'm inside my audio MIDI setup application. If you don't know where that is, just go to your launch pad. It's typically in the other folder right there. It looks like a piano. And once I connect my devices, if you haven't done it, then you typically have to select trust on the actual mobile device screen and enter your passcode. Now I'm going to enable all of these. Logic is going to try to use it right off the bat. And I'm just going to ignore that for a second. Let's enable the other ones. All three. We're going to click on Don't Use inside Logic. Okay. Now, I'm going to come down to the bottom of this. You'll see, well, before we do that, you'll see that the three MIDI devices are all active. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to say Create Aggregate Device. And this device, we're going to just give it a really useful name. We'll call it the monster. And in here, we will now choose which pieces are part of this. So certainly the three that we want there. And let's see, we'll do the Steinberg. We may have to do the Telestream audio capture just so that we can hear this in the screen recording. I'm assuming after I select this, I'm going to have to restart my screen recording, but we'll see. We'll put that up in the very front. And just doing that so we'll be able to hear it. Although I think we want the clock to be off of the Steinberg. We'll check it out. So now I've got all of these things happening into one device. So the iPad, the iPad, the iPhone, the Steinberg, and the screen capture. 
are now all being put into one thing. Okay, so now let's add an external instrument. And we may have to, I've had a hard time finding out the best way to label those, but they're all showing up. So let's do iPhone here. And I believe the iPhone is input five and six. And that is a DX7 clone, KQ Dixie on my phone. Let's add another instrument here to a new software instrument. So that's the phone. On this one, let's see, input, we'll do one and two. That's my big iPad and that is, let's see, three and four. So one and two would be the last of the iPads and it is the Moog Model 15. So that's this one. And we'll do one more instrument here. Oh, I don't need two of them. Let's see. Instrument, external instrument. And this one is going to be three and four. And it will be the middle iPad. And that's the synthy instrument. So now we have all three of these connected simultaneously. And one thing I was noticing, there is some latency there. I don't know. It looks like we're set at the top setting. Again, this could crash things down, but we're going to apply changes. And we could actually, because now that these are all on external instruments, we could do all kinds of fun stuff with these in terms of uh, creating track stacks. So I think we want, so now I've got one. <laughs> Sounds hideous, but you get the idea. These are now like instruments inside Logic. I will say, right this moment, there is a significant amount of latency happening right now. So let's see. I think part of that's just because they're external instruments using an aggregate device. So the biggest question becomes about whether or not they're usable inside this format. Is there gonna be too much delay or latency and I think everything's manageable, meaning if you want to use this instrument in here, perhaps uh, you need to move your MIDI or do some compensation manually with your MIDI. Uh, all of that is very doable. Uh, you can't freeze these tracks, but you could record them into audio and then move the whole thing. It's going to stay consistent so far as I've noticed every time. It's not changing the amount of delay that's there between all of these. So I think that that's a pretty good sign. The other thing to do and to experiment with that I haven't done yet with this setup is to figure out which of these needs to be drifted or corrected for. For instance, I don't even think based on what I'm hearing that I should have put the Telestream audio capture in here and that's likely to be adding a bit of delay. Uh, and without that or without the screen capture happening, we would have a much tighter response anyway. This whole system adds unnecessary delay for recording performance, but for screen capture, it has to have it. So I wouldn't have that in the actual using or the, the workhorse of the aggregate that I'd be creating. Another thing to think about through all of this, and one thing that I really like about Logic and Apple is main stage. So it's not really about Logic, but it's in the Logic family. Okay. Da-da-da-da. 
So one thing that I'd be doing in here is using main stage then if I was finding that I didn't want to connect all these devices all the time, but I had an instrument say that I really liked how it sounded. So now with the auto sampler, okay, let's open that up. Yeah, here we go. So now with this, I can come through. We're going to send this to the iPad. And you'll see I have my input. I don't know if we're going to be able to choose between all of them. Let's come in here to our settings for a moment. Audio input would be iPad. Okay, so that's the Model 15 Moog patch. Say I created a patch in there I really like. And... I click on up on the notes and you can see it's sending MIDI to it. The audio is coming from the iPad, right? And so now I could say I want to do, I like the five velocity layers. I'm not sure. I feel like the low sounds are not going to be as big a deal, but we still want to probably do the logarithmic two, give us more details up in the higher velocities. And... We just did every single note. It's going to let, let us choose which audio looping to do. So we're just going to do search with crossfade, and we could change that later if we wanted to. And then we're not going to do round robin for this. It's not going to change significantly enough. But for this, I don't want to spend the whole day. I could. I'm just going to do a small sample of this so you can see how it works. So we'll do one octave and let's hit sample. And we'll give this a name. Model 15. This is being saved in our music folder. That's a default. going to cancel that for a second. I was just thinking about that as I did that. We don't have multiple velocity for this particular instrument. It's a, an exact model of the Moog, which means we just have one. Makes it a lot simpler for this, but... The original Moog didn't have velocity in that sense. That's something that came afterwards with additional instruments. So what we're looking for is how this works with the, the actual looping capabilities. You see it's adding the loops in there as we go. And it does an automatic process to find a good location for those. It doesn't mean it's perfect. And of course, we can always edit those in one of our samplers later. But it's automatically doing this. So if an instrument had various velocity effects, then we could be recording these at each of the velocity ranges, and it would make a more realistic version of that instrument. So we're about halfway through. we got one minute remaining. If you can't see the power of what this is doing, um, well, I hope you do see the power because this is allowing us to take some of these instruments that we have on these peripherals, maybe we don't have them anywhere else, and we're able now to make sampled versions of them, of the patches we're creating. So I can create a complex patch in one of these other instruments and make a new playable consistent instrument later. We can still tweak the sound later using filters and EQs and compression and reverb, but the basic core will be the same every time. 
we can also save those presets, change them on the extra on the mobile device itself, and then either use them like that or make a new sampled instrument every time we make something new. But this is a pretty intense way to be able to take some of those external things and bring them into your toolkit. Plus, you could now take this sound, say you don't have an iPad or this Model 15, but you could use my EXS files that are being created from this. Okay, so that's done for what we did. Oh, I wanna cancel that, let's see. Let's go into, let's go into Logic for a moment. And let's make a new software instrument track. And on this one, we're going to use Alchemy. Now with Alchemy, I'm going to go to File, Initialize the Preset so there's nothing on it. I'm going to Import Audio. Let's see, I want to go here, Music. Audio music apps, I believe. Sampler instruments, auto sampled. We'll do max unlimited just as a sampler and we'll import it. We'll set our quality to ultra. And then let's actually look at this. Not a bad sample point. We'll come back up to this instrument. So it's a little softer. I'm not sure what that's about. I'd have to explore. It could be the auto sampler just recorded at a softer level, which is my guess. Um, I had already a volume setting on there. I should probably calibrate that. But the, the sound is essentially the same. I think if we were to get that the right level, then it would sound pretty much the same. Okay, so a really interesting way then to take our mobile devices and get them into our full devices.